So I am absolutely exhausted today. I feel like a pile of dog crap. My head hurts so damn bad and I'm just exhausted from today. So so no intro, no, no nothing funny today. And also I apologize if you hear something windy outside my window. I have a tarp above my roof by my room because water sucks ass. Anyways, destroy the ever living crap out of that subscribe button so that we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate all the support. Currently at 928 subscribers, smash the boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button. I think it needs a little bit of cleaning there. With you subscribing, we can get it nice and clean like Mr. Clean up in this bitch. So I want to talk to you all today about why your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh deck is garbage. Why it's a hot pile of a boo-boo stain fresh out of I don't know, Robbie Cole's holes. I'm, I'm just kidding. This obviously does not apply to every Yu-Gi-Oh deck, but I got into an interesting discussion with someone in the comments section on my uh, tier list video that I posted about two days ago. And at the time of making this video, two days ago, of course, we get someone in the comments that says, oh, it was five days ago. You know what I mean? Um, and so basically what they were talking about is, why aren't you talking about a deck like Cyber Dragon? Cyber Dragon is very good right now. And the issue with that, that I explained to this individual was that you have to look at the decks that are topping right now to determine if something's good. Um, and this kind of goes into a much, I guess, broader discussion with like people saying, oh, this deck's good or this deck is bad. And it's like, well, you may think playing the deck yourself that it's good, but have you seen the decks that are topping? And yes, you shouldn't always look at decks that are topping to get an idea for the meta. There are dark horses, there are rogue decks that can come out of nowhere, whether it be Grimmaju or in this discussion's case, Cyber Dragon, that can come out of nowhere and win. But see, the issue is, is that you have to consider several things when deciding if you want to play a deck that is off the radar. You have to consider one, when did this deck top previously, if at all? One of the things that uh, this commenter had said to me was, Cyber Dragons have two tops under their belt. And I was like, okay, did these Cyber Dragon decks top before Power of the Elements? Because if it's before Power of the Elements, then those tops really don't mean anything anymore. Because Power of the Elements is that insane of a set. It changed the game that much with the new top decks that we got that you can't play the same Cyber Dragon deck card for card, the same Grand Maju deck, the same Flunderese deck, the same Altergeist deck, card for fucking card, that you did before Power of the Elements because you're setting yourself up for failure. So if you think that a deck is good, don't just walk the walk, talk the talk, take it to a big event and see how you do. And that's not to say like, oh, if you haven't been to a big event, you don't know what you're talking about. Rather, what I'm saying is that I don't want anyone in the player base, whether you're a subscriber or not, to get the wrong idea or impression of the current metagame. You know, the biggest factors when deciding what decks are good outside of just looking at the top decks and researching to see what's good is consistency. You know, how consistently can Cyber Dragon going first build a board of negates? Because let's be honest with ourselves, that's what Yu-Gi-Oh fucking is. Like, you gotta build your board of negates and are you gonna hit the Dark Ruler? Are you gonna hit the Evenly? Are you gonna hit Sphere Mode, Lava, Lightning Storm? The list goes on. Can you play through interruptions like fucking Sprite can? Sprite has absolutely redefined what it means to play through negates. The fact that with like just a little bit of gas, Sprite can play through Ash and Imperm that's disgusting. You cannot tell me that that's not good. Can Cyber Dragon do the same thing? In my opinion, no. Can Grand Maju do the same thing? No, it can't. You know, they can run really good cards. They can run things like Feather Duster, Change of Heart, Mind Control, like Monster Reborn to get back to Grand Maju if uh, not all the copies are banished off Desires, you know, because it's a good going second deck. Cyber Dragon can OTK really well going second. But you also have to ask yourself again, consistently, how consistently can it do that? How many cards do you need to do that? Because if I'm going second with Sprite, and like, let's say you just pass turn, you open up the booty booty butt cheeks. If I open up a nimble beaver, I fucking win. We go to the next game, you lost. Because I can OTK you just with one card. 
just with a nimble beaver. I open nimble beaver, you lose. Going second every time. If you don't have any hand traps, you lose. If like, obviously the only playable card in my hand is nimble beaver, then yeah, there's a different discussion there. But if you just brick, like, let's just say it's something terrible, you know, three cyber, three cyber dragons and like, I don't know, three cyber dark horn. I don't know why the fuck they're playing the cyber dark stuff. I think it's booty, but besides the point, and you're just like, oh, I can't do anything. I'm going to pass turn. Cool. Summon beaver. That's game. Like I'm going to build a dam. Literally, I'm going to build a dam with my beavers and I'm going to get game. And so, you know, it, it, it. Is actually interesting that this came up at this point because I was playing against someone who was, <laughs> I don't know if they were trolling or not. I'm just taking it for face value. I was playtesting Sprite on EDO Pro. They're playing a 60 card Dark Magician Dogmatica Illusion of Chaos dog shit deck. Like it, it, it's, it's hot garbage. And <laughs> the person tries to tell me, nah, man, Dark Magician's gonna top this YCS. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? Like I, I'm, I'm over here like, excuse me, <laughs> like Dark Magician. And I straight up told the guy, if Dark Magician tops this YCS, I will bite bite my words. I'll eat my words, I think is what it's called. And I'm like, bro, I'll, I'll cash app you. Like straight up, like Dark Magician isn't gonna do shit this point. And that's because of the support around it. That's because of the boards that it can build aren't as good as something like Sprite or Tear Element. And I don't really think anyone can debate that. Is there cool things that you can do with Dark Magician? Absolutely. But look at my 60 card branded Eldritch deck that it was a build that another Yugi tuber had shown off that topped like some sort of European tournament YCS championship thing. Came in like top 32, top eight, whatever it was. I built that deck card for card. I came in 27th place. But you know why I did that? It's because no one was prepared for the shit that I was doing. No one was prepared for a deck playing set rotation, demise of the lands with like 12 floodgates or whatever I was doing. Like, you know, we see decks now playing 12 hand traps. I, I went the opposite route of that and played that many floodgates instead of hand traps. And it worked out for me. People misplayed. People didn't know how to combat what I was doing. People didn't know what kind of cards I was playing. And it worked out for me. You know, I, I go back and watch that deck profile and I talk about some of the crazy funny stories of like how people misplayed against me and that gave me an edge. That's not to say you can't do that with Cyber Dragon, but if people at least have a decent idea of what Cyber Dragons do and you're not really pantsing them, then that's not going to work out for you. I came in 18th place with a pure trick star deck back in 2017 and I was the first player since that regional was the first one of the season, I was the first player to quote unquote top with Trickstar, put him on the map. It was only my invite wasn't a top eight, but you get the point. And it was the only pure Trickstar deck in top. No one else in top 32 was playing uh, pure Trickstar but me. Michael State was playing Trickstar Wind Witch. Mine was pure Trickstar. And other than the Droll and Lockbird loop your hand combo, no one knew what my shit did. No one knew that Candina was basically a Stratos or that I could chain multiple Lycoris and target the same monster. People didn't realize that Light Stage wasn't a once per turn Rota. I, if I had three copies in my hand, I could play all three and search three Trick Stars. I got people to use up their back row when I would freeze one, thinking that if I played another field spell on top, then that one would still be frozen. So they would shotgun their, their back row and it was a way to out back row. People didn't know what my shit did. So it led up to people misplaying and then I was beating them. And it, it was delicious. I was beating Zodiac consistently. Go back and watch that profile as well. And with these decks, even though they're not topping regionals or YCSs, what have you, that doesn't mean that you can't play these things at the local level. And overall, it's not to say that these decks are just bad and you're garbage at the game. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that I, I you don't be upset at your deck or at yourself or at your playing abilities if you take a deck like Cyber Dragon or Grim Maju and scrub out because like to like a regional or YCS what have you because at the end of the day you're going into a room full of meta and if your deck isn't specifically designed to beat the meta you're going to get punished for it like when I played with 60 card branded Eldritch I lost to a 60 card Dogmatica Dark Magician deck like, because Branded Eldritch, it, it literally couldn't beat Rogue. It could not beat Rogue. If I played Branded, I would win. Flunder, I would win. Sword Soul, I would win. Because that's what the deck was built for. If you take something like Grimmaju, Cyber Dragon, whatever, to Locals, you're going to have a much better time. Because it's a much more condensed environment than something like a regional YCS Nationals, where people are going to be playing the best decks in the format that offer the most consistent results, and that offer the most explosive boards. So... 
Guys, please let me know down in the comments below what are some what are some dark horse decks of the format you think are, are going around. I really wanted to talk about this because that that comment back and forth I had with that person really kind of inspired me to make it. I thought it'd be a really interesting topic. Um, and again, this isn't to say like your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh deck is is just shit. It's not to say like oh the deck you're currently playing is terrible. The point that I'm just trying to make is that when you are selecting a deck to play whatever format it may be, take the time to do the research and look at what is topping, look at what is doing well. And if you want to play something that's more rogue, look at those sparse tops that it's had and build your deck around that for the current format. It's not to say that you'll just do bad because you're playing a, de uh, a different deck or that you're always going to do good. It's just you're playing something off the wall that may not offer as much consistent results as something that is more well known and more well experimented with like flunder sprite tier element what have you so guys thank you so much for watching hopefully i'll be in a much more giddy mood i guess uh come the next video like i said i'm just i'm feeling like a bucket of liquid ass so guys thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video